Hello and welcome to Kamile Consulting's Your Work, My Love Seat. Today we have four guests who are going to talk to us about their work life. These are four professionals who are going to talk to us about work inspiration and engagement. That is, what gives them a sense of meaning and purpose with their work, and what gives them a sense of connectedness, belongingness with their work. We're also going to talk a little bit about how they identify their natural talents and how they have aligned those talents into the work that they're doing today. So there are really three things, three tasks for you as you um, listen and watch the conversations as they unfold. The first thing is to pay attention to body posture, what's being expressed with the body. Secondly, pay attention to the word choice, the actual words that our guests are using to describe their work life. And finally, that third thing, pay attention to the overall emotion, the feel and the sense um, of emotion that's coming from the conversation. I'm looking forward to talking with everyone. Hope you're looking forward to it too. For our first guest, I'd like to introduce Adriana Escobar. Uh, Adriana, thank you so much for coming to us today and being on the love seat. You're welcome. Uh, the very first thing to orient us a little bit is tell us a little bit about the work that you do. I am a preschool teacher for four and five year olds, so I help prepare them for their first year at public school for kindergarten. What kind of things go on when you're preparing? What kind of tasks are you preparing these little kids for? Oh, everything from their emotional, social development, all the way to their academics, to their reading, their writing, their math. Can you think about who you were as a child, who you were as an adolescent, uh, what you liked doing and how you liked spending your time, and kind of refl reflect on that in terms of how you, how you bring that into what you're doing today as a teacher? When I was growing up, um, when I first was in preschool, English was my second language because my parents spoke Spanish at home, so I was always home with um, a relative who only spoke Spanish. So um, English came to me through preschool. I learned how to speak English in preschool. Mm -hmm. And then um, growing on into my elementary years, I struggled with school. It, it didn't come naturally, especially with reading and writing. So I think that that carries on into um, me being a preschool teacher because I have really learned techniques and I really value their growing and developing and their learning. And I want to be that stepping stone for them. And I want them to build that confidence that it was so hard for me to build. I want to be that good teacher that helps prepare them for the rest of their lives. So I think that that has played a huge impact on what I do and why I chose to do it. And then as well, um, growing up, my mom always had a home child care center. So I grew up with children. Um, you know, they come and they go. So all, I, she still has one now and she still watches my oh. two. So it has, that has also played a huge effect into the age group that I chose to do because obviously teachers can be from preschool to college and I chose preschool because it's where I feel most comfortable and enjoy it the most. And let's welcome our next guest, Sharon Batiste McEwen. Uh, Sharon, thank you for being here with me on the Love Seat today. I appreciate you taking your time to talk. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, and Sharon, I invited you to have this conversation because I've known you for some years and I've seen you in a couple of different uh, environments. And I just really like how you communicate yourself around your work life and the kinds of projects that you get into and the way that you talk about them. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay. Going a little bit deeper into two other specific topics of our conversation, um, I'm looking for what inspires you about the work that you do. What gives you a sense of meaning and a sense of purpose in what you do? Well, HR in many cases is the crux of any business, the people that work there, how they go about their business, how they are um, compensated, how they are appreciated, how that's communicated to them. And so 
I find that really inspiring at the end of the day on a really good day that, you know, I've done something to be able to make somebody's life better either you know, they were having a problem and they're with their benefits and we were able to solve that problem or somebody needed a job, they interviewed well, we were able to hire them that, and you know, the, it's gra very gratifying um, when you're able to do that for somebody who's maybe re-entering the workforce and you know, has great skills but needs a chance and, and you've given them that chance so you've made their lives better and they're happy, they, you know, they are appreciative of what you do. Um, you know, in a performance management situation where somebody's having difficulties and, you, you know, they were struggling and you were able to help them and counsel them and get them on the right track. That's really inspiring to me. And welcome to our third guest, Tiffany Mensing. Tiffany, thank you for coming to the Love Seat today. It's really nice to have you. Glad to be here. Um, before we get started, the best way to jump off is to tell us a little bit about what you do. I'm a professional organizer and I focus on residential organizing, so helping families create a home that works for them instead of against them. Got it, got it. And just shifting gears a little bit from, from what you do, mm -hmm. take me back to um, you as a kid, to your childhood, to your adolescence, to your early adulthood even, and, and reflect a little bit on sort of what you, what you like to do for play or what your natural um, inclinations were uh, and how they show up in your work today. Um, you know, my, naturally growing up, people assume as an organizer that I was very organized and I was not very organized. Um, so I've definitely lived you know, in the world that my clients have of, you know, not always having an organized space. Um, but I've always, you know, liked, you know, solving problems, um, helping people, working with different kinds of people. And, you know, I've seen that, you know, in high school, different groups of friends in college, and then even after college in more of a corporate environment, always able to work with a lot of different types of people and help them solve problems. And so now, that's what I do, except I do it in a totally different way than I did when I was in the corporate world. Much more creative, um, and I get to be, you know, have more control over kind of everything around, around the work. And our next guest on the love seat is Lindsay Olson. Lindsay, thanks for being with us today. I really appreciate you taking your time out to come over and talk with us. Thanks for having me. Um, the very first thing I want to do is to have you tell us a little bit about what you do for work. I am involved in a weekend backpack program where we provide uh, backpacks full of food to hungry school children for the weekends. Can you, uh, now moving into the other portion of the conversation, conversation, which is about inspiration and engagement. Mm -hmm. Inspiration really being, you know, what gives you a sense of purpose and a sense of meaning in the work that you're doing with this program. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Um, you know, I remember learning about the national organization a few years ago and was just shocked when I looked into our own community and our own schools that my own kids are going to be going to. And, and realizing how many children would be eligible and would be in need of a program like this. And I'm the kind of person when, you know, I, I just, I don't think that's right. There shouldn't be hungry children. And, and, you know, it may seem very overwhelming that, you know, you can't, it's very hard to think of, of hunger as, you know, a global problem. But if you really can look at it and say, there's children in our own community that are suffering, that are hungry. And if we can just kind of take that off their plate, and if we can just, solve that problem even if it's temporary you know that's one less thing that these children have to worry about and a you know a seven-year-old child shouldn't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from so i was very inspired to just start the local chapter get it moving um it's just you know it, it it's it, one person can't solve everything but i think everybody can do something and that's kind of how i try to look at it that you know i realize i'm not going to solve the world's problems but if we can feed you know, 70 kids over the weekend, then let's do it. You know, we can, we can do this, we can make this happen, um, you know, and I'm hoping that the program continues to grow, but I think that's what really keeps me motivated. 
wow, what a really terrific set of conversations we had today about work life. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty um, excited about what I heard. I heard a lot of pleasure. I heard a lot of passion in work life. Um, and in my world, I call that work love. Um, the other thing that I want to point out that I heard time and again uh, and picked up in the feeling was self-responsibility. Uh, a, a perspective of I'm responsible for my work life and I'm going to, to take that through all the kind of work that I do. Um, and let's then go out here a little bit and talk about work inspiration and work engagement. How much work inspiration did you hear? How much of a sense of purpose, a sense of plays on d'etre, uh, the French word for reason to be. How much of that did you hear? I heard a lot of that. Um, and a sense of belongingness, a sense of um, connectivity, you know, the community of work that uh, people talked about, about how it brought them together. I think one person talked about it from the perspective of um, uh, a sense of belongingness in her community, a sense of uh, connectivity among the work group, uh, among the volunteers that she works with. So we heard those themes time and time again. The other one I'm going to point out is how much did we hear about how people knew who they were almost sometimes since childhood and certainly through early adulthood um, in terms of their natural talents. How many of these people today told us about their traits from being very young and how they rolled them out into their professional lives. So that's the alignment that brings really a lot of job and professional ease that can sometimes be missing when we don't have that alignment. So this really brings us to the end of our program today, and I'm really glad that you spent the time with us. Um, what I'm hoping that you're going to get out of this is, in some way, see yourself in some of our guests today. Hopefully you've been reminded or maybe thought for the first time, hey, I embody some of that too, because I really believe that you do. Um, and I think there are probably some other traits that you think maybe that's something that you can cultivate or grow or expand upon. There are lots of ways, lots of motifs for being able to do that and I hope that spurs you on to do more of those sorts of things in your own life. Um, so this is what we do at Kamile Consulting. Your work, uh, my love seat, is just one of a number of projects and products that we have going. Uh, I look forward to an opportunity to have this kind of conversation with you again. Take care and thank you for all the work you do.